students in our previous class we have covered the first half of our lesson titled tribals dikes and the vision of a golden age from here we have covered tribals their living style how they were dependent on forest and so on today we are going to deal with the second half of our lesson let us take the first term that is dikes this term was used by tribes for outsiders which include traders money lenders who came to forest to buy forest produce from tribal people and made their lives miserable these people offered them cash loans and in turn they asked them to work for wages for example indian fine quality silk was in great demand especially in western countries these traders money lenders came into the forest and purchased cocoons from tribal people at a very low rate and they sold these cocoons at a rate which was 5 times greater than the value offered for the cocoon producers since these traders and money lenders made the lives of tribal people miserable they started calling them as dikes or outsiders during colonial rule a lot of changes occurred in the lifestyle of tribal people first of all the british were in favor of all those tribes who were settled in one place and practiced cultivation the reason behind this was it was easy to administer them and to collect revenue from these tribes therefore they forced this tribal people to live a settled life and practice cultivation second most important point indian timber was in great demand to build ships or for the construction of railway lines these wooden planks were used as sleepers for railway lines to satisfy this demand the british declared forest that produced timber as reserved forest that means these forest belonged to the british no one could enter this forest without their permission definitely this act angered the forest dwellers and the tribes revolted against the british as a solution to this problem tribes were allowed to live in certain patches of forest and practice shifting cultivation but in written 
they were supposed to guard the forest work as laborers to cut and supply timber this definitely affected the lives of tribes now let us move on to our third important point in our previous class we have seen that among the tribes there were some important and influential people who were called chiefs or leaders now what happened to these chiefs under colonial rule the power and the function of these chiefs changed they were allowed to keep their land titles over a cluster or group of villages and rent out their land for cultivation but they lost much of their administrative power and were forced to follow laws made by british officials in india the fourth point since the british interfered in the lives of tribal people they started losing their livelihood as a result they went on looking out for a job in the neighboring villages from the late 19th century tea plantations started coming up and mining became an important industry tribes were used in tea plantation of assam and coal mines in jharkhand they were recruited through contractors who paid them very less amount and the remaining money went in their pockets they were not allowed to go back to their homes this resulted in different tribal revolts for example coals rebel santhals rebel the bastar rebellion and the worli revolt the moment that birsa led was one such moment who was this birsa yes birsa was born in a poor family and grew up around the forest of bohonda grazing sheep playing the flute and dancing in the local akara forced by poverty his father had to move from place to place looking for work since the britishers were in india there were many missionaries who followed them their intention was to spread christianity birsa went to the local missionary schools and listened to the sermons of missionaries here he got an idea that mundas that means that particular clan will be able to regain their lost rights later on birsa also spent some time in the company of a prominent vaishnav preacher here he started to value the importance of purity and piety but we must remember that birsa also turned against missionaries and hindu landlords 
he saw them as outside forces that were ruining the munda way of life slowly birsa became very influential among his people he urged his followers to recover their glorious past he talked to them of a golden age in the past a satya yug the age of truth where the life of mundas was pretty good birsa strongly wanted to drive out dikes so all his followers started attacking them as the moment spread the british officials decided to act they arrested birsa in 1895 convicted him on charges of rioting and jailed him for 2 years but when he was relieved from the jail birsa along with all his followers continued to oppose dikes they wanted to set up birsa raj wherein they raised a white flag as a symbol of birsa raj in 1900 birsa died of cholera and the moment faded out However the moment was significant in at least two ways first it forced the colonial government to introduce laws so that the land of the tribals could not be easily taken over by dikes second it showed once again that the tribal people had the capacity to protest against injustice and express their anger against colonial rule they did this in their own specific way inventing their own rituals and symbols of struggle students in this lesson we have seen how the colonial rule affected tribals see you in the next class till then goodbye god bless you